Hey everyone, my name's Luke, and I'm an engineer here at QTools, where we make tools for quantum physics. Today, I'm going to be talking about our line of time taggers called the QTag. So what is, a Q, what is a time tagger? A time tagger is simply a time to digital converter, or a device that takes an analog input and determines the exact time that that input crossed a certain voltage threshold. And what can we do with a time tagger? One common uh, method for using time taggers is time-correlated single photon counting. In TCSPC, we take a single start pulse and then a, a stop pulse a certain time delay later. We calculate the time between the two pulses. We, with that time, we then add it to a histogram. And over a long amount of time, or a large number of events, we get a nice diagram of all the different uh, time lengths of this certain event. This has many different applications in a lot of different fields, including in quantum optics, where it can be used in quantum communications and single photon emitter characterization, in biology, where it can be used in fluorescence lifetime measurements, in fluorescence uh, correlation spectroscopy, in ranging, where it can be used in LIDAR or in, or in uh, optical time domain reflectometry, or in particle physics, where it can be used uh, to analyze bunch parity and detector characterization. All right, so let's take a look at our devices. All of our devices have a single start input and between 8 and 32 stop uh, inputs, uh, external clock support, uh, marker support, marker input support, uh, support for, out for programmable output channels, uh, logic for things like coincidences and uh, other filters. Uh, they all communicate via USB 3, which means we can deliver over 100 uh, mega counts, uh, mega timestamps per second. And all of this is with a jitter down to 2.3 picoseconds RMS. So let's turn one on. So now what I've done is connected a simple fu function generator to the start channel and uh, one stop channel, so channels one and two. And now let's take a look at the software and see uh, how we can uh, interface with the device and get those timestamps. This is the proprietary software that we use to interface with uh, our QTag, which is called DAISY. In this interface here, we are shown the number of counts present on all channels per exposure time, which is currently set to 100 milliseconds. If we want, we can change the exposure time, for example, to one second, and all the numbers update correspondingly. We can also save these uh, counts, so the number of counts per channel, per exposure time, uh, to a CSC file for later data analysis. We want to change to save a single file, we press this red button. We generate a CSV containing the number of counts per exposure time for all channels. We can also do this in a row, all in a row. If we click this button, and every exposure time, a file will be saved containing the exact same information. Also, if we want to save not the number of counts per channel, but the timestamps of each channel, we use this lower feature here. For example, and if we open this up, we can see on the left here we have the timestamp, and on the right uh, the channel on which the timestamp occurred. As you can see, we have many events on channel 1, all around 1800. Uh, picoseconds. This is because the start channel is set with a cable that has a slightly uh, longer or slightly shorter length than cable one. So we have a slight uh, <coughs> than channel one. So we have a slight time delay delay between the two channels. We can see this um, in our coincidences. So first we're going to now switch our channel, which is our cable, which is connected to the start channel, to channel two. 
As we can see here, we have no coincidences between any of the channels. However, if we then change our, uh, our coincidence window, we can see that now we have a good amount of coincidences. If we want, we can save the coincidences in the exact same way as before by clicking this button. Additionally, we can look at the histogram of what the time uh, stamp difference is. So here we have our input set to global, which means that we're looking at the differences between all of the different channels. Because we only have the two channels connected, we see only the time differences between channel one and channel two. To get a better view, we can adjust the histogram size. So we'll turn down the bin width and we'll turn up the number of bins. And then we can zoom in by setting the ranges to manual. As we can see, our histogram is around 1.75 nanoseconds. So we can see that there's a time delay of around 1.75 nanoseconds between the two channels. If we wanted to correct for this, we can simply go to detect your parameters and adjust the signal delay of channel one to the negative of that number. So 1.75 nanoseconds. As we can see, this is no longer, we no longer have any uh, values at that range. So if we switch this back and we then adjust our bins again, oops, we can see that our histogram is now centered around zero. So we've now corrected for the different cable length cable lengths of the two channels. In the detector parameters uh, panel, we can do all sorts of other options, including changing the whether to trigger on the rising or falling edge of the signal, and then various delays, whether we want uh, to put a divider on the channels, whether we want to link the channels for higher resolution, calibration, and more. So, that concludes our uh, tour of DAISY, our built-in, our proprietary software. Now we want to move on to Python and show you how we can do the same things using universal Python. Let's download the software examples for Python. This can be done very simply on the QTools website. Under time taggers, QTag, downloads, and Python examples. Go here, we extract this, and then inside we have uh, lots of different Python examples. The library itself, which references to the, the DLL file here, and a software manual. First, let's take a look, look at the simplest example um, here. With this example, we'll just be very simply reading out the count rates and coincidence rates of the device. So as we can see, this is only a few lines of code in this example. To start, we import a time library so we can do a, a, a delay later. We import the QTag DLL wrapper. We then declare the object contained within, set our exposure time using this declared object, do a quick delay to give the QTag time to set this, and then we read out all of the count rates and coincidence rates for all of the channels. And this comes out in, the, in this array of data in the following uh, format. 
So if we can see, the first the first one is count rate on channel uh, channel zero or five, the start channel. Then we have one and two, and then later we have the coincidences between one and two. If we run this. We see, just as expected, we get zero counts on, the, on channel zero, counts on one and two, and then again counts on the coincidences between one and two, because we've already set our, uh, our uh, coincidence window. We can also do some quick examples where we can plot this same data. So if we run our live plotting example, we can plot the count rate over time of various channels. In this case, channel one, with which, which has uh, counts on it, and channel three, which has zero. Finally, we can do a quick histogram. functions very similarly to how it works in DAISY. Basically, we so for plotting, we import our matplotlib libraries. We again import our um, QTAG library, choose the channels which we'd like to calculate the um, timestamp uh, differences between, add a histogram, set the histogram parameters. In this case, um, yeah. Uh, again, do a quick delay, and then read out our histogram and plot it. Let's give this a shot. And here we have a nicely plotted histogram with number of events on the x-axis and time in picoseconds on the, on the x-axis. This is y-axis. So, this concludes our quick software tour of the proprietary and uh, uh, Python interface. Hope you've all enjoyed it, and have a nice day.